Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM221 Club story from Hemel Hempstead Town with me, Daniel. It's part 135 of the Tudor Times today and we've got two big moments in the context of our season. After a frustrating start in the Premier League, we go away to Norwich who have become formidable opponents and top half regulars in this division. Before we play our first Champions League game at home to Carabag, certainly the most winnable on paper, but now, as we head into a spell of three games a week, we've hit an injury crisis in the position we took a gamble in the summer. So if you're looking forward to finding out what's been going on and how we get on in today's two games, then please do chuck a thumbs up on the video, subscribe down below for daily FM22 content, and turn that notification bell on to get your alerts. You can find links in the eye above to the Helsingborg Save, our top three playlist, and of course the Twitch channel, Football Podcast, and Merchandise Store too. You can also support the show as a channel member down below by clicking the join button but there's a lot to get through and interestingly given the fact we've gone past deadline day it's not really in a transfer market because if we get that out the way first we actually didn't do a thing in the transfer history we weren't able to sign anyone we'll talk about the targets we missed to one of the teams in our champions league group and we also didn't let anyone out as well so a little bit threadbare in certain positions and as we discussed in the summer particularly where we took those gambles in midfield loaning out the two young stars and then selling Lee Cocken and Do, what couldn't we afford to have? An injury crisis. So where have we got every single injury? Of course, it's the midfield diamond. Two of them picked up on international duty. German Moreira out for six weeks. He's served two of that already. Mailton out for four weeks, the same for him. And then Stamatis, who actually made his first league start against West Ham in the last game, was brilliant, was the difference for us. He's now out for four weeks as well. So three of the eight options in the diamond are gone. We're going to have to rotate a bit. And all three of them, probably first choice now in those attacking roles in the diamond. So definitely a big concern for the next few weeks. Not going to be able to rotate and with the League Cup starting, with the Champions League starting, of course, that is a big problem. If we have a look at the schedule, though, you saw us fail to take advantage of our dominance against Chelsea in the one all draw on the first day. We then had exactly the same issue away at Leeds. We just could not score a goal. And I got frustrated at that point. Out came Coronel, who was complaining. In came Stamatis. In up front came Azoma. And both of them made a big impact in this game. Stamatis was the star man on the pitch for me. We got a goal from Mountain, a goal from Azoma, but Moreira got his injury. It was obviously followed by a couple more. And now this month, we've got a game every midweek and no midfielders left outside our starting 11, bar one. So we might have to be a bit more clever with these sorts of games, maybe play Torres in a slightly deeper role, maybe push one of the defenders in, a Delgado, someone like that. But that's all to worry about later in the month. Let's have a look at our Champions League group, because Carabag, you think, oh, well, maybe that's an easy game, and perhaps it will be. We'll wait and see. But the other two teams in the group are a resurgent Porto, who have got some real world-class stars. Rene Platt, an absolute gem, someone who's been linked with some of the best clubs in Europe, and a few others that are right up there, and rightfully so. But Real Madrid has been the thorn in our side this summer. Of course, the team that tried to sign Mario Rickert the year before he went to Bayern Munich, incidentally, He's unhappy there now and he's linked with coming back, but we probably can't afford it. In terms of players though, Real Madrid stole the two defenders that I tried to sign this summer. They bid for the same players and they managed to tempt them to go there instead of here. They've also got Fatos in the middle who we've tried to sign for so many years, but it won't happen now. He's not reached his potential. But the two we did try to sign, first as a replacement for K-Striker was Jan Ulrich. He went in the end to Real Madrid for £31 million. He wasn't a world beater by any means, but he was a really solid centre-half available for a mediocre wage. But in the end, Real Madrid just blown us out the water with 94 grand a week. We couldn't compete. So the Slovakian international is there. And the other one is a young superstar left-back, Felix Barth. He had a 38.5 million release clause from Juve. A brilliant player, wonderful physically, brilliant going forward. Had a little bit to learn defensively, but considering the money he's worth now and the quality he's got, that's going to be one that got away because I think he could have been better than Delgado, to be honest. But they're the players we're going to be competing against soon. We'll make sure we show at least one of the Real Madrid games on camera. We've drawn Sheffield United in the third round of the League Cup. Of course, a side that we've played numerous times in the Premier League, the only side not to get a point so far this season. But let's go and get straight in to the first game of the day. 
because Norwich away, armed with Alban, who we almost got on a swap deal this summer, are going to be a very difficult test and one that's hard for us to combat. It seems like most teams this season are going for this little box midfield tactic, which is working a little better in restricting the chances, but if we had Mario Rick up, we'd have won all three games, and that is the sad truth of the situation. So let's pick the team that the assistant has recommended, see what he's done with the midfield, and then we'll pick our own before heading into the first game with one eye on the Champions League in midweek. Okay then, a few of our regulars have got a heavy match load having played international football, but I'm not as worried because I'll take the gamble of resting them against Carabag. The midfield is a bit pieced together. We've got Carlos Martin, who we spent most of the summer trying to sell. Arlan, last season's holding midfielder, now playing in the middle of a diamond. And the only sub midfielder is Andreka, who can only play one of the four roles. So our starting eleven is John Moore in goal, Chauvin and Delgado the fullbacks, new best player at the club, Zarouk, I told you it would happen eventually, alongside Inacio Jura as centre-half. They get second place in player of the month as well, Zarouk. In midfield, we've got De Vita, Arlan, Coronel and Martin, two of those yet to start a competitive game this season, and Azoma joined by Torres up front, as Torres and Ricketts both been awful, we really need to find some form. Let's go and get into it though, away at Norwich, always a difficult game. They're one of the best sides outside that top six now, are they going to punish us today? Five changes made by Norwich from their last game, but they've still got Alban in the number 10 role. Luca Romero has scored many a goal against us before, and Helmut Zayla, someone we tried to sign back in his Liverpool days. But our team is not as strong as it could be. The midfield is maybe where we get overrun, but potentially these guys can start making names for themselves. So let's get into the first half, see if we can finally start scoring some goals and maybe deliver on those pre-season expectations. Well, I was going to say it's the same old story as we approach the half an hour mark, but it's really not because we've not even created chances in this game. It's been a really poor game of football. Now, that can partly be because Norwich are a very good side, but... Still, we'd expect a little better, though. Azoma's put Martin in. He's put the ball in the back of the net. But I've got a sneaky suspicion he was offside. Azoma playing really well. Key contributions galore. But is this going to count? It is going to count. Carlos Martin, how ironic. Sometimes things just work out for you, don't they? It should have been Alban in our side and maybe Carlos Martin in theirs. But our only shot on target is in. And it's courtesy of the man we really didn't want. At half-time, we're going to lead via that goal. Chauvin has picked up an injury. There's the risk with playing people with a heavy match load. And maybe this is going to be one of those seasons where we start getting an injury crisis. We start having to rotate the squad. And it would be fitting on this season that I've gone for a slightly smaller squad that that happens. So Danilo Jose is on at half-time. It's 1-0 to Hemel Hempstead Town. And ironically, it's probably been our worst performance of the season. As Coronel puts the ball in, in the first game we haven't dominated, we've got ourselves a lead. Jose crosses, Azoma's up, beaten in the air by Halliwell. Arlan finds Zarouk and Danilo Jose. Goes backwards to Zarouk again. I'd love one to, him to put one in the top corner from 30 yards after all the talk about him for a year. As Azoma gets to the right, by the byline, back to Arlan. He finds De Vita. Going to be forced backwards as he goes left to Delgado. And here's De Vita, 40 yards out. Alban makes a half challenge, but it falls for Delgado and Martin to De Vita. Turns left, goes to Coronel, gets towards the byline. There's three in the middle if he can find them. Instead goes back to Delgado and De Vita. It's a great move. Arlan, 25 yards out. Oh, why on earth has he spent years pushed back in the holding role? And why has he spent the first three games of the season on the bench? Arlan in as the box-to-box -box midfielder. And maybe the solution was here all along. Two shots on target, two goals. I'd much rather that than 20 shots and a nil-nil draw. As we pass the hour mark, Miguel Coronel is knackered. We've been told to bring on Case Striker, which doesn't really make sense. What I'm going to do is bring on Andreka, and we'll push De Vitter into midfield. I think they're better the other way round, but two changes made. We're going to save the last one. Or in fact, no, we'll take Torres off for Tyrese Ricketts at some point. One of these kids has got to deliver up front. As we've just under 20 minutes to go, it's Norwich on the front foot, though it's across as easy to intercept and Zarouk hoofs downfield. Azoma picks it up, takes it past halfway, in the end turns back to Danilo Jose and Jura. Into the centre circle he goes, got support from Andreka. Is improving really quickly, he's been the best trainer consistently, so I'm starting to think he's going to become the global star as Jose's got it on the right, all the way back to his keeper. No idea why we needed to see all of that. 
but it's out as a route at centre half. Delgado's wide of him, but he's been pressed really high up the pitch. Norwich committing four or five forward now, and that does leave spaces in behind as Martin finds Azoma to Tyrese Ricketts. Really needs a goal! And it isn't just any goal, it's a spectacular strike. Azoma assists again, not what we bought him in for, but we'll take it. And Tyrese Ricketts, left footed, has put an absolute worldie in from 25 yards. Three shots on target, three goals. And after three games where we've had so many shots and not taken advantage, this is absolutely hilarious. And Drecker has ruined the stat by hitting the target with a free kick. And it's tipped wide for a corner kick to Hemel Hempstead Town. Arlan will deliver it to the back post. Up go two players, but it's headed away. And De Vitter will get it in midfield. Really looking confident now and assured on the ball as Zarouk finds Jura. Nothing doing, but what a result. It's not been the best display. In fact, it's been the very worst of our four games so far. But it's going to be our biggest win. It's going to be a great result. And if we can keep a clean sheet again, gives us a real positive sign at the back too. So one of our former man's Kaplan is on. He finds Shamanga on the right. Chance to cross. Cantero's there. And Moore makes a brilliant save onto the woodwork. Back in again to Izela. And it's blocked behind for a corner kick. If we can hang on, keep the clean sheets with this new centre-half partnership. It promises to be a really good season defensively. John Moore saves. It's a brilliant claim from the corner. And with 30 seconds left, it's going to be a 3-0 win. And a brilliant, ruthless display away at Norwich City with no midfield. As a long kick forward is headed away. They've got one more chance to come forward and ruin the stat here, Norwich. De Vita, lovely experience foul. Just brings him down. I do like stuff like that. When it's done right, it can be beautiful. So it's a free kick from Alban. Headed away by Arlan at the front post. De Vita hoofs downfield. Ricketts is up. Norwich have left no one back. Azoma's in the middle unmarked. He's got to find him. What are you doing, man? Took too much time. The full-time whistle goes. It's a 3-0 win. It was a great control of possession. It was a brilliant defensive display, but it wasn't our best going forward. Despite that, we found three goals. An excellent day. Hopefully Ricketts first goal will spring him into life and really good signs from the backup midfield. Let's give head to Carabag. Hopefully another win to come. Fitness test time and there's going to be a few that don't make this one. It's going to be a very rotated side. We've got a big game on Saturday, then a League Cup tie midweek and we've got a few injury problems again. Chauvin picked up that knock at the weekend. He's not quite fully fit and there's a few others where they've got that heavy match load, that hangover from international duty and we don't want to make it any worse. So let's see who's fit and who's not as we haven't even sold out the ground for this one. So the fans obviously don't think it's a big game. But the heavy match load, Chauvin, Zarouk, De Vita, Coronel and Azoma, we're going to try and keep all out. I'm not sure if we can do it with the midfield injuries. We'll be back in a minute when we pick a team. Well, having looked at the Carabag scout report, I've actually gone full back up because it's suggested that they're very weak. We've also got a return after many years on the bench for Ian Watts, one of the few youngsters we couldn't loan out this year. But the rest of the side is now as follows. We've gone for Josh Hayes in goal. Jose and Peebles, the fullbacks with Stryker and Hannifan. What a reunion that is. They haven't played together for a while as centre-half. And that shows our strength, doesn't it? They were first choice for many a year. And Drecker in the holding role. Arlan and Martin, two of the other first choice players of years gone by in centre-mid. With Carlos Torres dropping to number 10. Behind Danny Harrison and debutant. Sasa Ostrakovic. Let's see how they get on. Are there going to be any new heroes tonight as we host Karabakh with a reserve side? Hopefully it doesn't go wrong. Well, only six subs for the visitors and of course a bit of a risk for us to change everyone, including the goalkeeper. Let's hope though it's going to pay off as we get into the first half. They're probably weaker than any of the opposition in last year's group. So on that basis, I think we'll do all right. But obviously the game is more important in respect to the other two teams probably being stronger than the ones we faced last year. Certainly in Real Madrid's case. So let's go and get into the first half. It's nearly sold out here at Hemel Hempstead. It's still a Champions League group stage game. And we want to make the goals count as it's into the back post. Header away. It's put back in by Arlan. Just wide of the far post. We want to get goals. It's something we've struggled with this season. If we can get two, three or four Really start to put them away. Get different strikers scoring. Be a really good sign for us. As these two not really kick much of a ball yet. As Arlan finds Martin. Through ball to Torres. Got support from Sasa Ostrakovic. Good save by the keeper. He'd scored a couple on international duty recently. I thought it might be his time. But that one, a little bit too easy. Straight at the goalkeeper. 
as Arlan takes the corner. Outswinger to the back post. Strikers up. Can't win the header. And with 15 gone, it's going to stay nil-nil. Although, we're straight back for the throw on the left-hand side with Peebles and Martin to Astrakovic. In towards Torres. The flag goes up. VAR will check it. But I think it was all right. I'm going to stick my neck on the line there. So that Sasa has got an assist on debut. And Torres has start to find his form. He has. Goal awarded. He's in the number 10 role today. But he's still delivering in front of goal. As we're 20 gone, we lead 1-0. And maybe more importantly for us, with half an hour on the clock, Porto are leading Real Madrid. I told you they were a good side. And Real, obviously one of the best sides in the world, signed lots of players we'd have in our first 11 if the deals had gone through. But at the moment, it's all about us at home to Carabag. We need to get the goal difference up, and Carlos Torres is taking it upon himself. Both strikers now with an assist. Harrison cut that one back, and Carlos Torres, with a plum, smashes it into the roof of the net. As we're back with Carlos Martin, five minutes to the break. Danny Harrison getting it from the challenge. They just can't get out here, Carabag. And to be fair, they've done well to contain it to two, but there's no out ball. A striker wins it on halfway for Martin. Up to Astrakovic. Through ball to Torres on a hat trick, and he's got it. First half hat trick for Carlos Torres. And we'll make sure we rest him for the weekend, because if we get a striker in form, we want them to be playing every week at the minute. Sasa sets up his second of the game, and at half time, it's 3 0 Hemel Hempstead. We can think about subs soon, including Ian Watts, who has occasionally played games at the top level before. I am conscious as we go through this second half that I need to rest defenders because obviously that's the area we're most limited in terms of rotation. So even if we have to play a few out of position towards the end of this game, I'm not going to worry too much. As Arlan, edge of the box, another one we want to protect for the weekend. Two screamers in two weeks and he's someone who maybe... Maybe he's pushing for that starting berth as the box-to-box -box midfielder. 4-0 with 55 gone. We'll see out this highlight and then I'll actually start making subs as Torres finds Jose and Andreka. Arlan back to Torres to Hanifan. Goes all the way to striker on halfway. Everyone else basically in the Carabag 18-yard box. What a ball that is though. Striker delivers it from deep and Sasa heads straight into the keeper's arms. We carry on. But it is looking all Hemel Hempstead at the moment. And thankfully, this reserve side has made it look easy. It's out to the left. Will Karabag get their goal? Hanafan loses out in the air. But it's comfortably wide. Didn't have enough pace on the cross to trouble us. With an hour gone, let's make some subs. Who do I take off? Definitely Arlan. Definitely Martin. And then it's either Andreka or it's Carlos Torres. I think it's going to be Torres just because of the nature of the subs we've got on the bench. So Ian Watts is one I want to bring on. Just seeing if anyone can play the number 10 role. So apparently Danny Harrison can be a centre-half. Not sure where that's come from. I'm going to drop Sasser in. Carlos Torres will come off. We'll bring on Ian Watts up front. Doesn't really matter which way round they are, but we'll put Watts as the poacher. Arlan will be replaced by Stryker in centre midfield with Jura coming on at centre-half. For some reason, Stryker can actually play in the middle not too badly. We'll then take off Carlos Martin for Rodrigo de Vita. Swap the order of them. And hopefully, with the last half an hour to go, it won't make too much of a difference that we've got a patch together side. Because Carabag are so poor, I don't think they can take advantage. What it has led to is a slightly calmer game, although Carabag have a free kick in a dangerous area. And Drecker heads away and Stryker goes long over the top. Ian Watts up on his own. This is probably his level of opposition, but a shot straight at the keeper. Easy to deal with. I'm a bit surprised he didn't get a move because he's done alright in the lower leagues of English football on loan and he scored a few goals for us before. As Sasa delivers the corner, Jose's down, penalty kick given, VAR will award it. I've no idea who's next in the takers list. I think it is Sasa Ostrakovic to be honest. Let's see who it is. It is. First goal for the club could be incoming. He's played really well today. Got a couple of assists already. Please make the penalty count. Oh, it's straight at the keeper but the rebound's in. And Sasa Ostrakovic, first goal for the club. Absolutely brilliant. On debut, he scores. Really pleased for him. The more strikers we get scoring, the better. And Sasa Ostrakovic, the signing I'm probably least certain about from the summer. He's really delivered early doors there. 5 0 with 10 minutes to go. And lots of players well rested for the weekend. As Babiev with the goal kick for the visitors. Headed away by Hanavan to Sasa Ostrakovic. Back to Andreka in the holding role. Someone who I'm pretty convinced will be first choice by next season. Back to Jura, who already is. And Harrison. Ostrakovic to Stryker. Through ball to Harrison. The only one who hadn't scored yet. And he's put it wide. It's a really poor finish. 
unfortunately just not his night but we can't complain at a 5-0 win with a heavily rotated side it's a fantastic start to our Champions League group but we know the other two sides are far far better than them let's go and have a look at the schedule for when Minette's going to be back as we finally started to hit some form in front of goal well Porto did beat Real Madrid which is going to make the next episode even bigger because we are going to come back in mid-October after the next international break for Manchester City at home and a trip away to Portugal. We'll then do Southampton and Real Madrid the episode after, so it promises to be a big couple of months and even look around Christmas. We've got United, Liverpool, Everton and City back to back. There's going to be some big games in there. So a big season starting in style. It was a couple of frustrating games, but the first choice team are starting to find some cohesion now. If you're looking forward to seeing where it takes us and whether we can keep up the run of clean sheets, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content. There's links to all the key playlists, including our new top three series in the eye above. There's also links to the Twitch channel, football podcast and merchandise store up there too. But thank you very much for watching as always. Above my head now will be the top threes playlist. Please give it a try if you haven't already. And I'll see you again here in a couple of days time for a tough trip to Porto and a big game against City.